30th of June 1946, the first nuclear bomb test since the Second World War takes place in a little known set of islands called Bikini Atoll. The bomb is called Abel. Five days later, in Paris, a mechanical engineer called Louis Rayard unveils the bikini to the world for the first time. And that's not a coincidence. So, back to that bomb. It went well. Well, it was a secret, but then it went well, so it wasn't a secret anymore. And people in the United States and Western Europe got very excited because at that time, nuclear was only really known as this thing that had helped end the, the war. Target. And war the really rain. sucks. And so they were all quite happy ago. about it. So this test of the bomb Abel uh, put nuclear back on the map just as bits of Bikini Atoll were being permanently wiped from it. So here we get to Louis Rayard, who in a marketing ploy decides to name his new two-piece swimsuit after that same bombing ground. And he doesn't stop his provocations there. He later went on record saying such scandalous things as a bikini should be able to be pulled through a wedding ring. He was out to shock, and shock he Everything did after he couldn't convince now, any models to actually reveal the bikini, he had to get a 19-year-old table dancer to actually, you know, wear it in public for the first time. Still, it was a massive sensation. The nuclear theme didn't just stop at the name either. It became, you know, this whole idea around it. The bikini is small and devastating, like a nuclear bomb. A very explicit sentence that Louis Rayard himself said at the time. Uh, do you know, this also wasn't just a one-off thing. The lineage of teeny-weeny nuclear-themed two-piece French swimwear actually started with the Atom, another very similarly named two-piece swimsuit that was revealed a few months earlier in Paris as well. The only difference being that it covered the navel or belly button, which made it that bit more acceptable, whereas the bikini shocked. So the bikini enjoyed its time in the spotlight. The atom design covering the navel or belly button is actually what became the norm until the 1960s when, you know, the Pope stopped banning it and films were allowed to, you know, be a bit more risque in Hollywood. But yeah, looking back, it's difficult to say how much of the swimsuit's eventual success can be tied up with its initial links to nuclear optimism. But that it was there is undeniable, and is a key part of how the name and idea stuck in the conscience so long, even though the design took 20 years to be accepted. It's not for nothing that the bomb means either nuclear bombs, or is something great or attractive. Anyway, let's get back to bombs. 1st of March 1954, again, Bikini Atoll. This time, Operation Castle, and a new kind of bomb that they decided to name Bravo is to be detonated. As always, a security sweep is done of the surrounding area, and nothing is allowed within 50 miles or 80 kilometers of the site. Cameras and all of these experiments are set up to record and observe, to try to get information on this new kind of weapon. Nine officers hunker down in a bunker 20 miles away from the site, and people get ready. What follows is the largest nuclear detonation that the U.S. has ever done. It is two and a half times more powerful than expected. The fireball alone is seven kilometers wide and after a second, and the crater two kilometers across and 70 meters deep. People 400 kilometers away can view it, and the explosion and subsequent cloud ends up contaminating 18,000 square kilometers of the Pacific Ocean. It is a thousand times larger than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. Most of the measuring instruments simply melted. Islands nearby that have not been evacuated are suddenly affected by the unexpected fallout, but they aren't evacuated for two whole days. In the bunker, 30 kilometers from the explosion, they still experience hurricane-strength winds that simply tear every other building off of the island. Outside, though there was expected to be no radiation, there is soon enough to be fatal. There's nothing to do but for them to run Show back into the bunker and hunker down. Occasionally, one of them the runs out from the protected corner they're in to the radio room to check when helicopters will be coming. It's a whole 12 hours before they're rescued. Outside, there is radioactive ash falling from the sky, fallout called bikini snow. It's too radioactive to let touch you without risk of radiation sickness or burns. So when the helicopters come, the nine soldiers cover themselves in bedsheets and cut out eye holes. 
And when the time came, they ran out. First they got in the jeeps and drove to the landing pad, and then ran from jeeps to helicopters like cheap and panicked ghosts. They survived without harm, but others weren't so lucky. Spoiler. This ends with Godzilla. So outside of the perimeter that the army set around the bombsite was Lucky Dragon number five, a small Japanese fishing vessel that was out there fishing, as fishing vessels are wont to do. And after a forceful map alteration of an explosion, the bikini snow came down, light, warm and radioactive. Unsure what to do, they piled it up in the corner of the boat with their bare hands and sailed back to Japan through the fallout. This was bad. Very bad. By the time they returned home, they were already showing symptoms of radiation poisoning, which was no laughing matter, especially in Japan. At the time, many believed that radiation could be contagious, a belief that led many survivors of Hiroshima and Nagasaki to be ostracized, and led to massive panic after Lucky Dragon Number 5 returned bearing this poison. Quite quickly, it scaled into an international incident dubbed briefly as Second Hiroshima, only calming down after the United States formally apologised and sent Japan a very large cash settlement. But this second panic left a mark on the psyche. There were bombs out at sea, ready to harm. And here, as you could only expect, the feelings to nuclear were very different to those in the United States and Western Europe. There was still a very, very palpable fear around nuclear. And so, eight months? After the boat's return, we get Godzilla. Weapons testing off the coast of Japan causes this colossal, unstoppable monster to rise up and wreak havoc on Japan. It is covered in scars made to look identical to those left on the survivors of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and conventional weapons cannot touch it. The film ends when a scientist comes up with some new technology and sacrifices himself with it, using it to take down Godzilla. Warning with his last breath, that there are some things that must not be done, some powers that we must not use. The message is quite clear. Don't do nuclear. Oh, fun fact. The Bravo detonation is shown at the beginning of the 2014 Godzilla film, except this time they cast it as the army's attempts to kill Godzilla, which is one way of recognising the icon's history, I guess. Of course, it couldn't all stay so simple. Japan later produced films where Godzilla was the good guy, and it has 43 nuclear reactors, putting it third in the world for the number of nuclear reactors currently live. Meanwhile, after the Bravo incident, fallout entered the common tongue in the United States and Europe, and people heard of the 264 islanders who were evacuated only two days after the explosion, and the damage that was done to their health. Nuclear was then in trouble in the Western world. There's a lot more that you could say about nuclear, but the point here has been made. Science and technology, especially things as visible as nuclear weapons and power, have their effects on all of us in things as subtle as the name of swimwear, the language we use, or films. History's tale is long and knotted. Things change, but... I feel being aware of examples and influences helps us see the world a bit more clearly. In history, almost everything counts. Really, the trick is finding what you can ignore. I think that's it. So this video is based on an article I wrote a few years back, so if you want to read more into that, uh, for example, there's lots of good stuff, or you know, Disney having a fleet of nuclear submarines, uh, or if you just want to see the sources I used, they're all in the description. Oh, you're welcome to comment or like or something, I don't know. Free country, at least where I am. In the recap of our story of Castle, three shots down and three to go.